Today's reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why are you disciples not led according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied about, rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for giving us your word. We thank you for becoming flesh and being the word. Lord God, as we hear of your scripture, May we receive of your spirit so that our lives may be transformed to a heavenly delight. And gracious Lord, I, as I receive of your Holy Spirit, I pray that in spite of my human weaknesses that you may be glorified. As we pray all this now in your Son's name, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That last hymn, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. I always, I've always liked that hymn. But I found myself, as I was singing it today in conjunction with um, the scripture reading, um, I find that, that that's all well and good, but the gospel message it can't end there. It can't, it can't just be like, we, we want to emulate Christ. And starting in our heart is a good place to start, but by no means is that the final point. That's the, that's the energy that allows us to go out into the world and be active as Christ is active. This uh, scripture reading is one that you, you, some, some here may not feel that they're real deep into the scriptures theologically, but, but I, I don't think too many are going to be surprised that when we start to break the scripture down, that we know this is something going on here more than just having dirty hands before you eat. Uh, let's, let's go right into the scripture. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. So, when I, when I hear this scripture reading, I, I, my mind goes to my background, which is in construction. And, and I think of like, you know, any, like Bob, you work you with your hands, and my uncle, and Earl, and, and, and John, you prepare food for a living. You know, so you, you probably have a sign that says this up, right? Employees must wash their hands before returning to work. And I like it when they have the sign. It's a good idea for everyone else to wash their hands too, right? I, I think of the jobs that we were on and how many times we didn't wash our hands before we ate, right? And uh, we know um, a plumber who you, you would say, wash your hands, man, you know? <laughs> um, I, I have this story. It's, it's a silly story, but it's, it's, it's a fond memory for me. Um, my grandfather, I worked with my father and my grandfather in construction, and it was, um, it, in hindsight, it was a blessing. <laughs> During, um, and um, he, he had a cerebral hemorrhage in, the eight, in 1980, I believe it was, in 81. And he um, instantly was put into what we thought was going to be a retirement. We, after he survived, we didn't think he was going to survive, but he did survive. And, and a, couple, a few years after he um, had this, he, he decided to come back to work. Um, but what was funny was I remember sitting after my grandfather had his hemorrhage and he was starting to get better, and it was a, it was a good year or two, and I was sitting at the table with him, and, and I, I saw his hands, and I said, my gosh, Pop, your hands are beautiful. Now, anybody who knew my grandfather, his hands always banged up and beat up. I said, you could be a hand model, and if you knew my grandfather, he did not take that as a compliment. <laughs> But I, it's funny how when we, we hear the living word of God, where if we allow it, it can take us on these journeys of memory. 
You know, you say, Barry, this isn't real theological thinking about your grandfather's, you know, but, but you know, my grandfather's been passed for many years now and, and I can say with a smile, like I have these memories, right? Um, that's what, where scripture can take us, right? It's good to learn the theology behind what Jesus was saying to the people of his time, but it's also a miracle in how the scripture can, can take us on our own journey. So what is going on here? With, with this washing of hands. And, and, and primarily what's going on is they don't really care. This isn't like an employee at your restaurant, right? Or your coffee shop. They don't care if they wash their hands or not. This isn't like telling your children to wash their hands before a meal. What's happening is Jesus is going around and he's doing things in the name of Yodevahe, of Jehovah, God. And they don't like that. And so they're correcting them on, on how, what he's doing wrong. If we continue in this morning's gospel lesson, we will see, though, that it, there is a play of how, uh, about wash your hands before you, before you handle food uh, because he goes off and feeds the multitudes. And they don't care that he's feeding the multitudes. He doesn't, they don't care. The people don't care. The religious sets don't care that he's healing people. What they care about is that they're doing it, what he's doing it, and taking the authority of God, which they're supposed to have. They're jealous. Isn't that interesting? They're mad because Jesus is feeding people. They're upset that Jesus are healing people. That they're trying to capitalize on the church. And anyone who studies the church of any kind, uh, any element, knows that the same thing happens today with organized church. I'm reading a man, uh, um, you guys know, um, know him, uh, Ralph Emerson, um, Waldo, right? So they taught you guys in high school, Waldo. He, um, he, he I, I'm listening to his, and reading his books and it, it's beautiful about the spirit, the soul. He's always talking about our soul and how tangible it is and it's true, it's true. I'm gonna preach on this in a few weeks about our soul. And and what he, what he would say, though, is that he, his problem was the organized church. Because it's, it's, it's trying to have all the answers for God, right? Rather than exploring, um, exploring a new, a fresh God. You follow? So th these Pharisees, these Sadducees are angry at Jesus because he's not one of them. And they're afraid that, oh, I guess they're afraid they're going to lose their job, Right? So the scripture, this scripture is very interesting in Mark. It actually gives us the theology right in the scripture. So we know right away that they're not really worried that Jesus' hands are dirty. Or are they? Right? Or are they? So first we'll go with the religious side of it. For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they thoroughly washed their hands thus observing the traditions of the elders. They, um, the Jewish tradition still does this today, right? During, uh, in preparation for the Passover, our friend Delana's mother, will, um, she'll go through her house and she'll get rid of anything with leavened bread and she'll clean everything out. It's like a form of spring cleaning. So they still follow this tradition. It is more than germs. They don't recognize germs. They don't understand germs. It's more than, hey, those hands are filthy, Billy. Go wash your hands. No. It's tradition. It has to do with their faith. It has to do with their religion. It has to do with their worship. At the very least, we may not always know why we do exactly what we do in the church, but we know that it's our tradition. So this would be their tradition. They would go through and they'd wash. This is spiritual cleansing, which would come to them from their mitzvah, their, their, their law. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the traditions the elders put but eat with defiled hands? You ever do something good and then somebody just knock you down? This happens to Jesus all the time. All the time. Um, it happens to us constantly. I was sharing with you a couple weeks ago on how negative people can be on Facebook, right? When you comment something, the first thing that comes to mind is something, that, yeah, but, yeah, but. This is, this is absolutely amazing. Um, as I just said a second ago, they're not upset with Jesus because he has dirty hands touching food. But in the 
essence, I found myself in preparing for the sermon, I did a 180. I went right back and said, you know what? They kind of are. They kind of are mad at Jesus for this. Because they're mad at Jesus for touching someone that they deemed unclean. They're mad at Jesus for touching fish, a basket of fish and loaves and feeding the multitude. They're mad at Jesus because he was literally getting his hands dirty. I'm reading this. Um, I'm reading some letters by uh, Plato. Um, anybody here read Plato? No. I highly recommend it. It is amazing how modern. Well, I mean, part of it is that they have new versions for our language, but the man can write, and and it's like it's it's a joy. And I was reading um, you, uh, Euthyphro by Plato. It's it's not too long. Um, but here's a quote that he, I was listening to this, um, this made the sermon this morning. I, I, it, I had to add it. I was listening to it when I was walking in Wesley this morning. And it said, the point which I should first wish to understand is whether the pious or holy is beloved by the gods because it is holy, or is it holy because it is beloved of the gods. And I find that this kind of brings us into today's scripture reading. Like, do they really, do the Pharisees and Sadducees, are they doing it for just religious sake? Is this pleasing to God? Is it pleasing to God for us to piously fall to our knees so that those around us see that we're holy? It, you know, I mean, Jesus talks about this a lot, right? As he, when he accuses them of being, the Pharisees of being like whitewashed tombs, right? Are we doing things for doing its sake? Or, or do we do it because it pleases the heart of God? It's an interesting question. Um, and it's easy for us to fall into, isn't it? Right? Because we have our traditions. We, we stand at a certain time, we sit at a certain time, and, and, and when a new pastor comes to the church, he changes the bulletin, and everybody's like, well, I've never done that before. Right? And the next thing you know, a few years in, it's how we've always done it. And I have some things in the service that I like to have as our tradition, so it feels comfort to us. But if it becomes so much so, why do we do it? Now, Jesus is... I, I've shared this before. Anybody who knows Jesus based on a 70s movie, um, especially Godspell, you, you don't know Jesus. If you picture Jesus as a long-haired hippie, Passively walking around, sticking flowers in the end of barrel, gun barrels. You, you don't know Jesus. Jesus did things that get your hands dirty, right? Jesus would do things that could get you crucified. There's no mystery on why Jesus was cruci crucified. You can't go around saying the things that he said, doing the things that he did, and not stir up trouble. He said to them, Isaiah prophesies rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written. I don't know about you, but if I, Michelle, when you go to a DCOM meeting in the future, I would highly recommend you don't call the members hypocrites. <laughs> and, we're, and they're not that high in a, never mind the bishop, right? It's never a good idea, is it, to call the higher ups hypocrites? These people, mind you, are more than just your pastor. They also have political authority in, in the area, right? Not as powerful as the Romans, but they still have a lot of power, as we see in the crucifixion. Amen? Hypocrites, as written, the people honor, these, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. Jesus is saying, we got to get our hands dirty. The play on words in this scripture reading is magnificent. They're saying your hands are dirty, you're not worthy to do what you're doing before God. And Jesus is like, are you kidding me? The problem you hypocrites have, he says to the Pharisees and Sadducees, is you're not willing to get your hands dirty. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human traditions. Then he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandments 
of commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. Powerful. Our Savior, our living Savior is powerful. You know one of the things that's starting to happen to me and as I get older? I've been doing a lot of self-reflection lately. And um, as, I, as you all know, I was working on my diet and continually too. I feel great. I lost two inches. Yeah, two belt buckles. Now i got to buy clothes, all right. But I've been feeling, I told you, I feel healthier in my soul. And, and I've been exploring my soul. And, you know, as I reflect upon our different traditions, you know, I say, am I walking as close to God as I could be? How is my relationship with Jesus? Now you may say it's a strange thing for a pastor to ask himself, but it's not. It's something we should all ask ourselves daily. How is my relationship with God? How is my relationship? I mean, think about it. If we don't do that in our own families, you know, we're always moving. It's like a treadmill pulling us back, pulling us back, right? If we're not walking towards something, we're walking backwards. Well, one of the things that I find as I'm getting older is that I've never, when I was younger, I was never afraid of anything. I wasn't afraid of the, I was real tiny in school, because I, I was sick when I was little, and so I was always the shortest in class, and I had what we call the chihuahua attitude, you know? <laughs> I had a lot of bark, but not a lot to back it up, but that never stopped me, and I'd never run away from anything, ever. And I would climb the highest tree, I would do all these things, and I find, as I'm getting older, I'm starting to find myself afraid. I'm afraid to fall. Right now, as little, I used to fall for fun, right? But well, you guys know what I'm talking about because it's not the same. I watched it, my, my son fall down the stairs. He gets up. He springs up. I'm all right. That we'd be in the hospital. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I find that these things, like yesterday we went hiking and I'm looking down. And I wasn't afraid, but I was afraid for my children to this high area. You know what I'm saying? And I said to myself, you've got to stop being so afraid of things. I'm afraid I'm going to offend. I'm afraid that this is going to happen or that's going to happen because we become paranoid when we get older, right? Because we've seen all the bad things that can happen. But as I'm listening and preparing for my philosophy classes, nevertheless, they talk a lot about Jesus. They talk a lot about Plato and Aristotle and such. And, they, and one re reoccurring message that comes up, and I'll keep it biblical, Jesus, they mention, Paul, they mention a lot, Saul, Paul. And they said what they had going for them is they weren't afraid. They weren't afraid. Even with, when we deal with Plato facing death, he wasn't afraid. And I'm thinking to myself, what do I have to fear? And one may say, well, is he enough death? And I say, but why am I afraid of that instead of cherishing the life that I have to live now? Mike shared with me that he wasn't afraid of dying. He was afraid of what he, all he was going to miss. Right? So let's not miss it. Let's take today as that blessing. It's not getting our hands dirty. Jesus said to the, to the, apostles, uh, excuse me, to the um, Pharisees and Sadducees, get your hands dirty, you snobs. That's pretty strong language, right? Calling somebody, but that's what Jesus said. That's the new American translation of what Jesus said. Stop being so holy. Stop justifying not doing things in the name of God and start living, truly living. There's this movie. The movie has absolutely nothing to do um, with this sermon so much. It's just that Michael Caine. I like Michael Caine. Um, it's The Prestige. It came out in 2006. I've got to be careful what I recommend from, for movies, I realize, Lois. I'm sorry. She watched Indiana Jones thinking it was um, more theologically based. And <laughs> so I have disclaimers. This movie's dark, okay? I'm not recommending it. Um, it's a good movie, however. It's about magicians and all that jazz. But anyway, in the movie he says, you've got to get your hands dirty if you're going to achieve the impossible. Jesus, in, later in this chapter, feeds thousands and thousands of people. That's impossible. Well, it ain't if you get, stop getting your hands dirty. Isn't the, 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 the scripture magnificent? If... If this scripture doesn't make you want to know more and more about Jesus and reading the living word, for Jesus says, I am the word, yes? Healing is no longer impossible if we can get our hands dirty. 
to truly love and to care our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters. So the very thing I started with this sermon, saying that they didn't actually mean clean hands because of germs. Well, they might not have understood the germ aspect. But they were upset with Jesus because his hands were getting dirty. We want to walk closer with God. We want to know spiritually, become more spiritually healthy, more physically healthy. Then I proclaim that we need to get our hands dirty. Amen? And in spirit of this sermon, I know we've played this song. Um, I play this song somewhat frequently. I thought we could look at this, the words from this song with new eyes. Um, you can remain seated if you like.